Welcome back to the part 2 of Essentialism video series. And now we are going to talk about the second part. The first part was Essence. The second part is Explore. We want to talk about what is the core mindset of an Essentialist. So let's dive into what is Explore. It consists of five things. Escape, Look, Play, Sleep, and Select. The perks of being unavailable escape. Without great solitude, no serious work is possible. The quote from the famous Pablo Picasso. Look for what really matters. T.S. Eliot said, where is the knowledge we have lost in information? Play. Embrace the wisdom of your inner child. A little nonsense now and then is cherished by the wisest men. Sleep. Protect the asset. Each night when I go to sleep, I die. And the next morning when I wake up, I am reborn. Mahatma Gandhi. Select. The power of extreme criteria is amazing. An inner process stands in need of outward criteria. So here is a comparison for a non-essentialist and an essentialist. A non-essentialist is too busy doing to think about life, whereas an essentialist creates space to escape and explore life. Escape so that you can create space to design, space to concentrate, and space to read. Turn off your laptops and smartphones and turn on your mind to full power the sole purpose of a class that is taken at Stanford University is to allow its students to create space to design their lives. Students are excused to deliberately take time to think and reflect. Imagine how powerful it is. Now you need some space to concentrate as well to do focused work. With the constant distractions that we have in today's generation, from constant access to internet, it is so difficult to stay focused. When asked how he discovered the law of universal gravitation, Sir Isaac Newton replied by continually thinking upon it. And to continually think upon something, you need to concentrate intensely. This generation has no space to get bored and thanks to internet for that. The faster and busier things get, the more we need to build thinking time into our schedules. Create some space to read by escaping. Bill Gates of Microsoft regularly takes a week off just to think and read, which he calls is his Think Week. He reads articles, books, studies technology in this book and in this week, and thinks about the bigger picture. And he's been doing this since 1980s. The second part to explore is look. A non-essentialist pays attention to the loudest voice, whereas an essentialist pays attention to the signal in the noise. Non-essentialist hears everything that is being said. Essentialist hears what is not being said. Non-essentialist is overwhelmed by all the information, whereas an essentialist scans to find the essence of the information. Here's an example of look. Look at the bigger picture. The airplane crews losing sight of bigger picture led to the worst crash in the U.S. history. December 29, 1972, Eastern Airlines Flight 401 crashed, killing its 100 passengers. Shockingly, all the vitals of the plane were perfectly fine. The green indicator light that indicated that nose gear was locked was not working. However, the gear was locked. Crew was so hyper-focused on the indicator light that they did not notice that autopilot had been deactivated before it was too late. I'm saddened to hear this. We should look at the bigger picture. One another part of look is filtering for the fascinating. Essentialists are powerful observers and listeners. They not only listen to what is being said, but to what is not being said as well. Hermione Granger of Harry Potter is an essentialist. 
Actually, I am highly logical, which allows me to look past extraneous details and perceive clearly that which others overlook. This is how we put Hermione Granger, an essentialist. The third part to explore is play. The word school is derived from the Greek word school A. I guess I pronounced it right, meaning leisure. Now, a non-essentialist thinks play is trivial, whereas an essentialist knows that play is essential. Non-essentialist thinks play is an unproductive waste of time, whereas an essentialist knows play sparks exploration. Play expands our mind in ways that allows us to explore. To germinate new ideas or see new ideas in a new light. Excuse me, see old ideas in a new light. It makes us more inquisitive, more attuned to novelty, more engaged. Play is fundamental to leaving the way of the essentialist because it fuels exploration in at least three specific ways. It broadens the range of options available to us because you're exploring. It is an antidote to stress. And stress is the biggest enemy of productivity. Imagine a day when you forgot something, then you got stuck in the traffic, and suddenly the chain follows for the bad things to happen all day. Yeah, so that is caused by stress and then leading to less productivity because you get stuck into other uninvited problems. Now, play has a very positive effect on the executive function of brain, which includes planning, prioritizing, scheduling, anticipating, delegating, deciding, analyzing. The skills any executive must master in order to excel in business. Christopher Columbus, who invented America, he was at play when it dawned on him that world was round. How amazing. The fifth part is, sorry, the fourth part to explore is sleep. Protect your asset. The, be the best asset we have for making our highest and the best contribution in the world is ourselves. If we do not invest in ourselves, our mind, body, and spirit, we damage the very tool we need to make our highest contribution. One of the most common ways, especially People who have type A instincts, who are ambitious and successful, damage this asset by not sleeping enough. Now, a non-essentialist thinks one hour less of sleep equals one more hour of productivity, where an essentialist knows that one more hour of sleep equals several more hours of productivity. Non-essentialist thinks that sleep is for failures, but an essentialist knows that sleep is for high performers. Non-essentialist thinks that sleep is a luxury, whereas an essentialist knows that sleep is a priority. Non-essentialist would think that sleep breeds laziness and it gets in the way of doing it all. But hey, essentialist knows that sleep breeds creativity. It enables the highest level of mental contribution. And now the fifth part, fifth and last part of Explore is the 90% rule. You can apply this rule to absolutely every decision or dilemma that you have. Now, if you have two options, give a rating on 0 to 100 to each options. If either of the options get anything less than 90, then automatically make it 0 and reject it. This way, you could avoid getting caught up in indecision or worse, getting stuck with 60s or 70s, just mediocre. Think about how you would feel if you scored 65 on some important test. Why would you deliberately choose to feel the same way about an important choice in your life? Non-essentialist says yes to almost every request or opportunity. The fear of losing it all. The essentialist says yes to only the top 10% of opportunities. A non-essentialist uses broad implicit criteria, like if someone I know is doing it, I should do it. Essentialist uses narrow explicit criteria, 
Like, is this exactly what I'm looking for? So this sums up everything about Explore. If you have any questions, ideas, comments, or concerns, please put it down in the comment box below. So are you an essentialist or a non-essentialist? Or you are an essentialist in making? Thank you and see you next time.